In 1999, Nintendo released a small budget game only in Japan. This fighting game gathered characters from other popular Nintendo games like Mario, Donkey Kong, Link, Kirby, and Pokemon, and was a huge success. Have you guessed it yet? Over the last 20 years, Super Smash Bros. has had five installments and will release another one this year. Collectively, they have sold 40 million copies. Every year, there are hundreds of tournaments pitting the best players across the world against each other. Across the entire series, there have been 66 playable characters. But one character was so good, they had to ban him from tournament play. In the third installment of Super Smash Bros. Brawl, Meta Knight from the world of Kirby is placed in a tier of his own. Meta Knight is so good in the game that almost half of tournament players were using him to compete. This made tournaments boring and predictable as they were almost always won by players using Meta Knight. So in January of 2012, Meta Knight was officially banned from tournament play. The history of video games is filled with virtually unbeatable characters. Akuma from Street Fighter, Abjab in GoldenEye, Peja Stojokovic in NBA Ballers, Michael Vick in Madden 04, or Bo Jackson in Tech Mobile. In the NBA though, you can't just ban Michael Jordan or LeBron James. You can change the rules though. Today we talk about how individual players and teams took advantage of the rules to win it all, forcing the NBA to change the rules. So, you want to build a dynasty? Be prepared to bend the rules. Today with me, I have Tom and Matt Hurst. Can you just introduce yourself, Tom? We'll start with you. Yeah, my name is Tom Hurst, business owner, and I have four kids. I, I'm married to my wife, Robin, for 18 years, and I'm happy to be on the show. Mac. My name is McLean Hurst. Uh, I'm 14. I just started eighth grade. All right, Tom, what's your connection to basketball? Uh, grew up uh, playing the sport. Uh, started in sixth or seventh grade and just never stopped. Uh, been playing my whole life. And now I'm the head coach of a girls basketball team over in New Jersey at the Wilberforce School. Okay. I love basketball. What's the highest level you played at? I played one year in college, uh, UNC Greensboro Division Three school. Mac, what's your connection to basketball? My dad likes it. <laughs> Do you play at all? Yeah, I play. I'm I'm okay at it. I'm not like a star at it. I'm more of a baseball follower, but Okay. What position do you play here? Lately have you been playing? Uh guard. Shooting guard. guard. All right. And this might be the same answer, might not. Favorite team. It is the same answer. I the Boston Celtics. Yes, we got set. Yeah. Is it because of your dad? Yeah. <laughs> All right. So today we're just talking about the rules. Um, I know you haven't heard the podcast yet, but basically we're going through and we're saying how you build a dynasty in basketball. So we started with assets, like collecting assets, and we talked about the draft. Then we talked about free agency and stuff like that. So today we're going to talk about kind of the evolution of the game and how it's changed. So first, let me just ask you this question. If you could change any rule in basketball, what would it be? I'll give you time to think. Wow. I don't know. I don't think I have a rule I would want to change. I, I would want them to start enforcing certain rules, mm -hmm. especially the carry of the basketball right mm -hmm. now. That one, I, I think that's a rule that exists that is ignored. So that's a rule I would change. I would say actually call that play because it gives offensive players just an, just an unreal advantage where defensive players already are at a disadvantage and when they don't call something as simple as putting your hand on the bottom of the ball and carrying it five feet it's it's a wrong so that's a rule that i would say that it's it would be it would be a change to call it and it would put players in a position where they have to actually play the same way everybody else in the country plays who doesn't play in the nba and yeah. now they're at a disadvantage so that's a rule change it would even though the rule's not it's not it's an unenforced rule that would be my change. Start enforcing that rule and watch what happens. It'll change things, I think. Yeah, make yeah. the game a little different. Big time. 
You know, it'll, the offensive players will actually have to beat defensive players mm -hmm. fairly with, mm -hmm. with, with actual ball handling movement and not just carrying it and taking three steps. <laughs> yeah, I think the same thing, um, kind of that same idea is traveling to me. I mean, I watched so many times and I grew up, I didn't, I played basketball until like third grade. So I didn't get a really firm foundation of fundamentals and I stopped playing basketball. But lately I've been playing basketball a lot. And so me learning basketball was watching NBA, watching players saying, oh, I'm going to try that move. So I play with some older guys in the morning who have been playing for a long time. They're in their 40s, 30s and 50s. So a lot of times I'll try these moves and they'll say that's a travel. And I'll be like, no, I saw James Harden do it. So <laughs> <laughs> that's so true. And they'll yeah. say exactly, you know, they're. This is entertainment. It's gotten to it's an entertainment factor. If they actually start calling these, it'll it'll stumble some of the biggest names in the sport. So they're they're pressed to you know behind the scenes. I know they're talking about it. They're saying if we start calling these these plays, it's going to really hurt some players. And they're, how are they going to react to that? How are they going to recover? So that's why they let it go because <laughs> people love to watch them dunk. <laughs> Who cares if it took five steps? Mac, is there a rule that? as you were learning the game, really frustrated you, or you're like, this is dumb? Uh, I'm going to have to agree with my dad, because a lot of kids, I watched uh, Kevin Durant mm -hmm. in the championship this year. It really bugged me how, like, he, like, every, like, dribble he took, he just, like, put his hand on the ball and, like, scoop it up, put it back down. So I'm going to have to agree with my dad. So I have the original rules of basketball here. I'm just going to quickly read through them. So number one, the ball may be thrown in any direction with one or both hands. Same rule today, hasn't changed. Number two, the ball may be batted in any direction with one or both hands, but never with a fist. You can hit it with a fist now, can't you? <laughs> you probably have. <yeah. laughs> number three, a player cannot run with the ball. The player must throw it from the spot in which he catches it. So that's uh, very different now. Yeah. There's no dribbling. Number four, the ball must be held in or between the hands. The arms or body must not be used for holding it. Number five, no shouldering, holding, pushing, tripping, or striking in any way the person of an opponent shall be allowed. So it's pretty similar now. Yeah. Although somebody. they allow it now. <laughs> <laughs> Number six, a foul is striking at the ball with the fist and as such uh, described in rule five. So kind of what I said before. Yeah. Number seven, if either side makes three consecutive fouls, it shall count as a goal for the opponents. So instead of free throws, they just said if you make three consecutive fouls, you get a point. No, that's neat. Yeah, so that's a little different. Number eight, a goal shall be made when the ball is thrown or batted from the grounds into the basket and stays there, providing those defending the goal do not touch or disturb the goal. So no goaltending and goes through the basket, you get a point. Yeah. Similar today. Number nine, when the ball goes out of bounds, it shall be thrown into the field of play by the person first touching it. In case of a dispute, the umpire shall throw it straight into the field. So the only change really there is they just throw it instead of, instead of the tip straight up. Yeah. up. Number 10, the umpire shall be the judge of the men and shall note the fouls and notify the referee when three consecutive fouls have been made. He shall have the power to disqualify men according to rule five. So similar, I think they have three refs now on yeah. the floor yeah. yeah so they just added more number 11 the referee shall be the judge of the ball and shall decide when the ball is in play number 12 the time shall be two 15 minute halves with five minutes rest between much longer now yeah much longer now and finally number 13 the side making the most goals in that time shall be declared the winner in case of a draw the game may by agreement of the captains be continued until another goal is made so looking at these some of the rules have been the same, but a lot of things are very different, such as you aren't allowed to dribble. Um, there's really no mention of this three-second lane violation. Yeah. Um, they don't say anything about dunking. I, I would imagine originally that no one was really able to dunk in that Nobody gym class. Nobody dunked, yeah. And so that's kind of how rules work is sometimes rules are only made when somebody, when there's a player who... Um, causes it so you don't think that something's going to happen and all of a sudden this player comes it's kind of ruining the game they're like oh we need a rule for that will chamberlain yeah will chamberlain. three seconds <laughs> so just a couple of those things is like you said the three second rule which originally the big players could just kind of stand in the middle and if you ever played pickup basketball with no three second rules so frustrating because you go in there especially as a little guy you go in there and they're just standing there and they just block you or foul you or whatever and it's just a frustrating thing so they added that rule i like that rule so the big men kind of can't dominate 
Another thing is defensive goaltending. Believe it or not, you were allowed to goaltend um, until they made the rule back in the 1950s. So imagine how hard that would be every time oh. he shot. There would just be a tall guy swatting yeah. it out. Kevin Garnett. Yeah. <laughs> Um, another rule is the free throw plane. So Wilt Chamberlain, when he was in college, um, he was a terrible free throw shooter. So he would just take a running start and dunk it every time. And they said, you can't do that. You got to shoot the free throw. Oh, really? So they added <laughs> that rule that you can't cross the, the <laughs> plane. Um, another rule, uh, Lou Alcindor, who, do you know who that is? Yeah. Do you? Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Kareem. Oh, yeah, yeah. So that was his original name, but... He was so dominant that they took dunking out of the game. And what's interesting is because they took away dunking, it led to him um, making this move called the sky hook or the hook, where he became such a beast with it. And if they had allowed dunking, it may not have ever developed that. Oh, that's really, yeah, I didn't yeah. know that. Sends it to Curry. Sky hook up and good. Lakers win. Okay, and so here's the two that I really want to talk about. The three-point line. So in 1979-80 season, the NBA adopted a three-point line. It's about 23 feet and 9 inches in radius. And the first year, Brian Taylor, a guard for the San Diego Clippers, made 90 of 239 three-point attempts, which was about 37.7%. Last year, Steph Curry made 324 of 789 three-point attempts for 41%. The league average last year was 35.8%. In 1979, the year they first tracked it, the league average was 28%. So today we're seeing a lot better shooters, right? Um, How do you feel about that? Is that making the game better? Is it more interesting? Yeah, first, I don't know if we're seeing better shooters because I'm a Larry Bird fan. I think he was a better three-point shooter than a lot of the guys now. But I think he probably shot 235 in Mm -hmm. a year and now 40 players shoot that. Like he just never, it was a novelty. And when it first started for a long time, it was a novelty. It was a, we're in a real, we're in a real pinch. What can we do? Well, let's go for some three pointers. So it wasn't really part of the offensive set. Now it is to the point where I think that we're not, we're seeing, I think it's hurting the game because I think that more of the talent and the really difficult things that happen in basketball happen back to the basket kind of basketball is gone like it doesn't exist anymore Mm -hmm. nobody has great post moves anymore it's like we don't really know the big men so i think it's off balance right now Mm. that's that's i just think that you can't that live and die by the jump shot is is true i do think that the three-pointer kind of kills the game a little bit especially for for youth basketball because they're just not strong enough to shoot it properly Mm -hmm. and it just destroys their their form their their real appreciation for the game because it's scary to drive into that lane. <laughs> but driving into that lane is the hardest part of the game that Steph Curry will dominate because players know that if you can penetrate and dish out to Steph Curry, he dropped it. The guy who did the harder thing there most of the time was the guy who went in and took the players in and cleared out that three-point shooter. So I do think that it hurts the game in that way. Right. Mac, when you were learning basketball, um, that first day of practice where their kids just throwing up three-pointers, all the time, yeah. Yeah, and I mean, it's been a while since I was your age. <laughs> I feel old now, but I remember when I first played, it was a 10-foot basket, and I wasn't strong enough, like you said, to reach that far. I wasn't strong enough to save you, Mom. So my shot form was throwing with all my might with both hands and just throwing it and chucking it, whereas a real shot, you're supposed to put your hand on the side, get it under and follow through and use your legs and use your whole body. So I think a lot of kids aren't using that form. So, Mac, have you ever made a three-pointer? Yeah. How hard is it? Like It's pretty hard, especially at my age. Yeah. I can't ever really reach that far. I usually have to like push off and use some of my foot strength, too, and it kind of ruins my shot. And how different is that than if you were 10 feet from the basket? It's a lot different. Yeah. It takes a lot less strength. And it's getting easier now because, like, you're growing mm-hmm. up and your body's getting stronger. Um, for me, I couldn't shoot a three-pointer until, like, my first year of college. Like, effect, like a real three-pointer. I could chuck it up and I'd make it occasionally. But I couldn't make a real three-pointer with, like, the actual form and everything until my freshman year of college. So, you would say, would you say overall that the average player is a better shooter? Uh, 
I, I would say the average player is probably shooting the same. I, I think that if you brought the players from back then in their top talent level and brought them into the game, they would be making just the same amount of baskets. Mm -hmm. We just put a lot more emphasis on it now because of the three-point shooting, because of that. Back then, there was more of a balance. I played uh, all the way up until 86. High school didn't have a three-point line. I was a point guard. All of my shots were from the three-point line. So on that side of it, I wish there was a three-point line because yeah. it would have made me a more valuable player. My coach would have given me the green light more, but instead I had two thousand point score big men down there and it didn't make a lot of sense for me to take the shot if i could dish it down to the big guys and get the same amount so that part of it there's that's the good part of it it spread out the floor which was good but now i think it's out of balance and we should we need to if, i heard them talking about a possibility of a four point line in the nba i don't know if you heard that yeah I have. but that would just be the worst thing they could possibly do because it's just it's already they're trying i guess they're trying to spread the floor out but i, th I think it's spread out enough yeah, I think what that's, was your question? Did I miss your question? No, that's you, you answered. Yeah. I was wondering if the average player today is a better shooter than the average player. You can tell years I'm ago. old because I don't want to give that <laughs> up. Because I, I, there's no way that the best shooter today would stand next to Larry Bird, who was one of the best shooters back then, and and beat him straight up. So the best player shooters back then could go against the best shooters now, and they'd have a serious competition. Mm -hmm. There would not be like, oh, you played in the '80s, so I'm a better shooter. No chance. I think that they'd be head to head fighting yeah. each other just like they do today and i think even if the average player were better you could argue that it's just because the larry birds and michael jordans didn't put as much practice into it but if they had practiced the three pointers they'd be amazing because oh, they yeah. were such hard workers they already had the fundamentals down yeah like you said there just wasn't as much emphasis on it right and now there's so much emphasis on it um like I'm old now thinking about when I first played, like you said, everyone wanted to drive the lane, get those layups, pretend like they were dunking. Now I play pickup basketball and there's just a crazy amount of three-pointer shot. Even if the they are not good at shooting three-pointers, everyone shoots a three-pointer. Yeah. It doesn't matter, matter if you're bad at it. No, just, chucking it that's up. That's the game today. But it, it's just a, it's simple math. They are putting all their emphasis in, and these guys who are, you're shooting with probably aren't shooting 20, 30%. The best are shooting 40, right? Yeah. And they're giving up the 95% layup to shoot that. Mm -hmm. And it just requires two passes and a good couple of cuts, and you're shooting a 95% hoop over the 40%. That, to me, is why teams can always be – good playing teams, Spurs, things can always beat a three-point shooting team, except for possibly the Warriors now because yeah. they're, they're a freak. But the, the next set of a three-point shooting team probably won't have a, a, you know, a KD on the team to back them up. I mean, yeah. even though they did it once without him, but yeah. still. They lost the second year with that amazing 70-win team to LeBron James and a guy who powers in and shoots the 95% mm -hmm. basket over just relying on this 40% on a great day shot. Mm. I just think that's that's the way the game needs to start leaning back towards the high percentage. Three passes and a layup kind of basketball Tom we'll start with you JJ Berea player yes point position or team you can start with either I think he's a shooting guard i think he plays for the magic Not i'll wrong. give you guard mavericks Mavericks. all right so all right. two points all right mac markeith morris real good uh position center uh, he's a forward and team magic no the wizards We'll just keep saying Orlando <laughs> until we get it right. There's a couple on here. <laughs> All right, Tom. Um, Kenneth Fareed. He's not a player. No, he's real. He is real? Yeah, he's real. He so, plays for the... Oh, I won't tell you. Uh, I'll let you guess. Oh, I know where he plays then. He plays for the the Spurs. No. Who would be a good Spurs player? The Nuggets. Nuggets. I'm going to guess his position. <laughs> Forward. Yeah. <laughs> Point. <laughs> Okay, Mac. Goran Dragic. Fake. Real. <laughs> yeah, he's real. <laughs> you can't tell. 
Center. No, it's not right. What? You didn't play for the Bullets? No. Bullets aren't a team anymore. I, I, DC. <laughs> Wizards. No. no. Wizards. They were the Bullets. That's yeah, they were. Old I, I am. know. <laughs> um, no, he's a guard. And team. We stink. All right. Uh. Dallas Mavericks. No, he's the Heat. All right, I'm gonna make it a little easier. Guys. Am I winning now? I'm yeah, winning you are winning. Two, one. <laughs> I'm bad. All right, here we go. Tom, Isaiah Thomas. Player, <laughs> guard, and I'm sad to say he doesn't play for the Celtics anymore. You know what team he plays? Cleveland for. Cavaliers. <laughs> here we go. All right, Mac. Um, Kawhi Leonard. Real. Uh, point guard? No. Spurs. Yes, yeah, Spurs. It's a four. Yes. I forgot about that. Okay, Tom. Joe Inglis. Not a player. No, he's a player. They're all players then, right? So far. I don't know that guy. He's a guard, though. And he plays. Yeah, he's a forward. And, and, and he plays for the Miami Heat. The Jazz. Jazz. All right. So, Jalen Morgan. <laughs> Fake? Point. Yes. Come on. <laughs> Raul Douglas. Player. No, he's fake. Son of a <laughs> <laughs> Denzel Valentine. Fake? No, he's real. Um <laughs> now guessing doesn't make any. Uh I'm gonna go with Wizards. No. Uh Chicago. Bulls and <laughs> probably a guard. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Um, Nick Stauskas. Player. There you go. Guard. Yep. Eastern or Western Conference? Do I get a hint? Eastern. Eastern Conference. He plays for the Knicks. No, he doesn't. No. Who's he play for? 76ers. Sixers. <laughs> Jeez. They're only 26 miles away. Yeah. I know the starters this year. There you do. <laughs> well, here's one. Joel Embiid. Uh, real. Sixers. Forward. No. Guard. He's gotta be center, right? He's gotta be center. He's yeah. Center. He's tall. I, yeah. I don't know. I'm not good with the positions. That's all good. D'Angelo Russell. Guard. Yes. Real player. He just got drafted to the Knicks. He's on the Nets. He's on the Nets? Yeah, he was on the Lakers, got traded. To the Nets? Yeah. I thought he was a Nick. No. Clay Thompson. Real. Guard. And Golden State. Yes. That was wrapped up. <laughs> Kelly Olynyk. Yeah, real forward. Miami. Nice. Jonathan Simmons. Real? Yes. Uh, oh, that's bad. I don't know him, so I'm going to guess. Uh, Bulls? No. Magic. Magic. <laughs> Finally! First Orlando. <laughs> um, it's a magic. Forward? Yes. Okay, okay. Otto Porter Jr. Otto Porter is a real player. Yes. He is a forward. Yes. Western Conference. Eastern. Otto Porter. He is with the Hawks. Wizards. Son of a gun. So I'm going to do I'm gonna do five more each, okay? All right. I'll do them quick. Joakim Noah. Mac. Fake. Real. Um, Guard. No, center. <laughs> um. Uh, Hawks. Uh, Knicks. Knicks. Jason Sampson. Not a player. Point. Nene. Real. Yes. Center. Yes. And. 
Uh, Atlanta. Rockets. <sighs> Nick Baines. Not a player. Wait. <laughs> These are good names you come up with. They're very tricky. Nikola Jokic. Or Jokic. Depending on your pronunciation. Real? Yes. Uh, guard? Center. Center. And... Wizards? Nuggets. Nuggets. I don't get the teams right. <laughs> Serge Ibaka. Real player. Forward. No, center. Either or. He, he's, yeah. he's a both. He plays for the Warriors. Wizards. The Raptors. The Raptors. Man. <laughs> it's hard, isn't it? All right, I think it's two more. Okay. What's the score? Tyreek Evans. Fake? Real. Uh, um. Center? Forward. Uh. I'm gonna guess the team and say. Uh. Nets? Grizzlies. Alan Crabb. That's not a player. It's a player. <laughs> that is a player. He is a guard. Yes. He plays for the Pistons. No, he plays for the Trailblazers. He must have been traded then. <laughs> no. <laughs> DeMarcus Cousins. Real. Good. Uh, um, I forget, but I think he's a... Guard? No. Forward? Center or forward? Center. Uh, and team. Um. Uh. I don't know. Um. Pelicans. Pelicans. All right. And last one, Devin Booker. Devin Booker is a player. He is a guard. Yes. He is a maverick. No, he's a son. He's a phoenix son. I was close over there geographically. Don't mess with me. <laughs> he's been around a little longer. You should though. have. Yeah, but these are all <laughs> play, new players. You should have like all the NBA teams like listed. So we I have, think like, that would help. Yeah. Like pick a team, you know, like we could, <laughs> we could randomly go. Put the remind you of the positions. Yeah, too. he has like a, a poster on his wall with all, all the major league baseball teams. So and it has them broken down by American League, and it's like it's the first time I ever. Really Back played. next time, ask me uh, any baseball player, and I won't know any of them. <laughs> <laughs> baseball is not my sport. I follow basketball, but I rarely follow to get the names in my head. I follow just uh, like, some people obsess over that. Kind yeah, of I know. Stuff. <laughs> they play fantasy sports or they play yeah, video games. Yeah, they play fantasy. That's big deal. Yeah, I'm not from that generation. So if you were to build a team, would you still build it around a center? Yeah, probably. Right. Getting the rebounds, because most of the time you're going to miss, and they're the tall guys on the court grabbing the ball. Yeah, and that's kind of the balance of the game. I like To me, I'm short, so I'm like, oh man, basketball's unfair, because all you have to do is be tall. And I feel like that was especially true when you first started playing, was because there was no three-point line. Like you're saying, your, your coach didn't give you that green light. It wasn't as efficient of a shot. So now I feel like you can have smaller players come in, like Isaiah Thomas. He shoots the three-pointer amazingly, but if you took away the three-point shot, he probably wouldn't be as good because he would have to drive the lane. He'd still be quick, but he wouldn't be as good of a scorer. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. 5'9", yeah. that's crazy. Yeah. You know? Even Allen Iverson, I think of. And, like, guys have done it, but they have to be freak athletes. Yeah. And I just wonder if the game is trending towards smaller players or at least quicker players because you look today like a lot of centers aren't these big 250 300 pound guys they're 
a lot of times they're quick guys like Nerlens Noel, Clint yeah. Capella. They're tall, skinny, and quick. They go up for dunks, um, but they're not. If they went up against a Shaq, they would get killed. Yeah. But the emphasis is on quick tempo, and you need to run the floor and have a lot of energy. Yeah. So it's a little different today. So if you could pick any player to build a team around from the NBA, who would it be? Right now? Mm-hmm. Uh, it would be LeBron James. LeBron James. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he's definitely the best player out there. The right. best all-around player. His only knock is, does he make other players better? But I think he's done that. But mm. I, I guess it would be LeBron James. How about you? You know what? In a perfect world, I'd pick Joel Embiid. <laughs> you really would. You are a Sixers fan. Sixers fan. No, I, I would pick Kawhi Leonard. Um, to me, yeah. and I'm factoring age in a bit there. I guess if age didn't matter, I'd pick LeBron James. Yeah. Um, but in terms of age, I think Kawhi Leonard is such a humble person. He can shoot the three-pointer better than LeBron James. Yeah. Um, he has post moves. I know LeBron has... Uh, Obviously, LeBron is better than him in some factors, but just in terms of coachability and humbleness, I love Kawhi Leonard. Yeah, I do um, love him. That's, that's a Spurs thing. I don't know yeah, how they do it. That's just me, That's though. the culture of the Spurs. Yeah. I, I got to see LeBron James in high school score 50 points over in Trenton, yeah. and I guess I've just been a fan ever since because I remember watching him think, thinking, he could play in the NBA right now. This is a great player, and he hasn't really... He hasn't failed in that department. Oh, he just absolutely. really has done an amazing work. But if in the history of time, of course, Larry Bird, I would say. <laughs> He's absolutely uh, the best player ever, yeah, ever because of what he did. Yeah. There are players that you would never have heard of. And, and right now, LeBron doesn't have that. He doesn't have a player that you would say, we never would know this player. We don't have a Scottie Pippen. Like Scottie Pippen is Scottie Pippen because he played with Michael Jordan. Larry Bird, Kevin McHale, there's a lot of players that you would never have heard of unless they were playing with Larry Bird. And they mm -hmm. would admit it. Yeah. You know, it'd Andrew. be tough for them to admit it, but they'd have to admit it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mac, who's your favorite player? Uh, right now? Ever. Doesn't matter. Um, Can't say Larry Bird. Sometimes when I'm bored, I'll Google YouTube videos of Michael Jordan playing. Yeah. It's kind of fun to watch how good he was. And it's fun because I get to watch him and maybe study him and get better at basketball in my league. So probably Michael Jordan. Okay. I'm glad you said that. That actually leads into the next thing. So hand checking, um, another rule that has always, it's been around. Um, they kind of re-upped it around 1994, right when Michael Jordan was in his peak. Um, so basically hand checking is a defender may not place and keep his hand on an opponent unless he is near the basket with his back turned. So for me, playing um, basketball, hand checking is such a natural thing because you see a guy, especially if he's bigger, coming at you, if he's faster, you kind of put your hand out there to try and block him. When you're playing pickup, nobody really calls it, but when you're really playing basketball, you're not supposed to do it, and that wasn't always the case, right? Yeah, no, yeah. absolutely. Because as a defender, you need to watch the ball, and you can't watch your ball if you're and your defender at the same time, so it was just very natural just to keep your hand on his shirt, keep your hand on his body just to feel for him so you could watch the play. And I always would grab a player's shirt, and as soon as it left my fingertips, I'd know I got to turn and find out where he went. Mm. And constantly guys would get mad and hit your hands off, but I think that's a necessary part of the game. So if yeah. they – if they uh, put it this way. If they call that, they better start calling the carries on the offensive <laughs> players, and then, then I'll be all right with it. And then it'll be even. <laughs> and then it'll be even. Yeah, so a lot of people argue that although Michael Jordan was very dominant, um, you can't really argue that, but because – he kept getting beat by the Pistons, who were such a physical team, and they would just rough him up every time he'd go in the lane. Um, the league started getting um, harder calls, especially on star players like Michael Jordan. So when you were hand-checking, they started calling that more. So a lot of people argue that the hand-check rules allowed for these star players who, if you put them 30 years ago or even 20 years ago, they wouldn't be as good. But nowadays, um, because they're given so much leeway and the rules are really geared for offensive players. You have like Steph Curry is so much better than if he had played so many years ago. So that's the argument. Yeah. Um, so like you're saying, I I watch videos, but I didn't grow up in the 80s. Um, what was basketball like? Well, first they wore really short shirt, <laughs> shorts. Their shorts were really short. And they just looked goofy. So mm -hmm. that was the hardest part. What was basketball like? Um, I know there was a lot more cutting and movement without the ball. Like there was just more of that. There was less isolation plays. 
Um, they would do it once in a while, but it wasn't such a, an aspect of the game where four players go to the left, there you go, do your one-on-one -on -one move. The fans love it. I didn't like that. There was a lot more passing. Just There was a lot more ball movement. Although the Sixers now have J.J. Redick, who, who I think is one of my favorite players in the league right now because of how much he moves without the ball. The guy is just phenomenal. I think that's the way the game always should have been played. I think he's a pure basketball player. He just loves it for the for this love of the game, and he plays it the way it's always been played in the successful teams, like the Spurs. The last time they won, there's a there's a YouTube video that went out that they, they would count passes on each possession if you ever saw it. Yeah, I saw it. It's amazing. It's just like ding, 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 all the passes. And it's, that's, just the, that's the way the game was played more often. And I think the Spurs are so successful because they haven't left it too much. So, Mac, has it ever been discouraging playing basketball when a player or a, another teammate who might be better at basketball kind of hogs the ball a little bit or your coach says, get him the ball and you're kind of just standing there? Do you have any experience with that? Yeah, a lot. Uh, during gym class most of the time just the kids who always think always some sometimes they are better mm -hmm. but sometimes they just think they're good and they'll just hold the ball all the time and dribble down and go for a layup or take a shot they probably know they can't even make but if they make it and they get lucky they'll give themselves a lot of credit so yeah <laughs> yeah I mean I think that it's discouraging other players when you have those good players like you said Larry Bird made his teammates better J.J. Redick is a guy that doesn't need the ball in his hands. Um, if you watched Clay Thompson last year, I think there was a game where I think he only took nine dribbles and he scored like 70 points. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, or he was on, I got to look it up, it was 60 or something, and That's he only took so many dribbles because everything was off motion, yeah. caught the ball, shot. Yeah. Bought like, a ton of three-pointers. The, the catch and shoot, it's, it's a hard thing to do. They yeah. rate players like who... Uh, he's a catch and shoot player and he can shoot off the dribble you know like they, they rate them differently that way mm -hmm. back then it was like you you better be good at both or you will not be useful to the team you need yeah. to be able to, you know, shoot off the dribble shoot off the catch some now they just they have plays geared towards the fact that he'll catch and shoot it and that's all they can do but yeah. we'll set him up and yeah so i think like when you're building a team today there's only one ball and there's five players so I think there's a lot more players out there who can do ISO and who can score um, a lot, but it's so much harder to find those players who are willing to move without the ball, yeah, to play defense, to set picks, to go in for rebounds, do all that other stuff that doesn't come as, with as much um, credit or star power, but that's just as, if not more important than being able to shoot a basketball. Yeah, and it's funner to watch. Yeah. If you really love basketball, it's fun to watch great pass cuts you're just like, wow, that, he threaded that needle and just made a layup because he cut moved without the ball. That's That kind of stuff's funner to watch if you're a pure basketball guy. It doesn't translate that well to Sports Center because they are looking for the big dunk, mm -hmm. and that's how a lot of the population catches up on basketball by watching Sports Center, and they think, oh, that's the way it is. No, really just sit and watch a whole game, and you can see that all the stuff that goes in. And the, the more successful team is usually the team that did a lot more of the ball movements, the cuts, the, the picks, mm -hmm. the pick and rolls, things like that. Yeah, I, th I like what you're saying. I think we live in a culture where we're so geared by star power. And I think it's funny that the players who have the most excite or the teams who have the most exciting players uh, still don't always win. Like I think of the Rockets or the yeah. Clippers. They have some great players and yeah. they do win a lot. But when it really comes down to it, they haven't won any championships no. because they haven't mastered that team basketball. And a lot of times they're so ISO driven. So I think if you really want to build a successful team and build a dynasty, you need to worry about the team dynamic. And and the Warriors do do that well. Mm -hmm. They really do. The fact that they have that many big name stars that are that are that are okay to give it up and pass, and everybody gets involved is is why they're so successful. Okay. So final question: Where do you think the NBA is heading? And I'll kind of just make it more simpler. Right now. Or overall, what do you think is the most important skill in basketball? Wow. I guess court awareness, um, a court sense, um, guys who, will, who, will, who look up when they're, they're dribbling. A lot of guys, they, they duck their head down and just drive and hope for the best. But the guys that just look up and have a court awareness of what's going on, what's, what's happening, and can see a couple of moves ahead. So court awareness is something that I think – it's hard to find because a lot of players 
do grow up as the big star in the high school level, the college yeah. level, and then they get up on an NBA team, and now they actually have to figure out how to play with guys that are better than them and, and, and start to try to find their role. And sometimes it takes too long, and attitudes they, their attitude goes downhill quickly because, like Nerlens, was kicking chairs on the sideline. Yeah. last year or the season before because he didn't get in enough because he started to realize that Embiid was probably a little bit better than him. Noel could have been great on that team if he started to figure out a way to start playing in that system. Mm -hmm. And now I don't know where his career will end up, but now he's with the Mavericks, but I'm sure he's going to say, see, I am great, but that's yeah. what it is. It's more court awareness and, and try how to make other players better, you know? Yeah. Mac, would you say offense is more valued than defense? just from your experience or what you've seen in the NBA. Yeah. For me, it can go either way, mm -hmm. but I think offense is a little bit more important than defense. Defense is important. It's like a main key part of the game, but offense is where you get your points and yeah, probably offense. Okay. Um, and then just final question, where would you like the NBA to evolve? Like, how would you like it to evolve? Would you like it to revert back to how it's been with a little more physical, um, maybe not as much offense? Or would you like to see more offense, um, less defense? And that's kind of open-ended, but... Yeah, no, I, I like the direction it's going into because it, I, I, I'm a bigger fan now than I have been. So I do like that. But I do think parity in the league is really important. Mm -hmm. These super teams, the Warriors, it's tough. It's tougher. Small market teams have a lot of trouble with that. So I'd like somehow or another for the... Players Association and the owners to get together to figure out a way to make it make there a little bit more parity where we all know now we're all waiting for the Warriors to fall apart. So the Celtics are planning mm -hmm. their entire future on when Cleveland and the Warriors fall apart five years from now. Mm -hmm. And then maybe they can be the Cleveland or Warriors where I would like it. I'd, I would like more stronger teams to be kind of it'd be like five or six. There's probably like five or six teams that could win the NBA championship on an average basis all through the 80s and 90s. They mm -hmm. all could pick any one of them. Now we're all just waiting for Cleveland and the Warriors to be in the yeah. championship. So It's funny, like a team that is as good as the Spurs, we're still like, they could win it, but a lot of stuff would still have to fall their way. Yeah, like someone would have to get hurt, even though they're a great team. But it's just, that's the and way it's... And, and a great example of how much it's changed, that what happened with the Celtics this year would never, ever have happened ever. Okay, they came back. With, they went to the Eastern Conference Finals. They they were number one in the Eastern Conference, and they traded all but four players from their team. How does that would never have happened? But it's like we're so desperate, we have to change things because we're not as good as the Warriors and the Cleveland Cavaliers. But you got into the don't change. They got rid of everybody but four players. I think that's correct, yeah. right? Yeah. But Through it's free like, agency that's, or trading. Yeah. yeah. They 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 have four guys from last year's team coming back, and that's because they're reacting to. What are we going to – we're not okay to settle for being third after Cleveland and the Warriors. We mm -hmm. have to figure out a way to set ourselves up to be as great as they are. And they might just be a once-in-a-generation team. So – and it's a shame for LeBron, by the way, <laughs> that his teams would have won in the 80s. They would have won in the 90s. They won in most of the 2000s. But then this Warriors team comes along and completely dethrones somebody like LeBron James. And I meant that king – thing yeah. <laughs> but isn't that kind of crazy seriously lebron james and his teams would have won a lot of nba championships but these warriors came in and just just messed it up for him because he'd have three more right now yeah yeah he would have just been up to what six rings now mm. so that's oh. that's my story hey this is ryan thanks for listening to our podcast today we'll be releasing them every tuesday during the nba playoffs Dynasty is produced by Studio D, and you can find other podcasts by going to studiod.co slash podcast. You can listen to us there or any other way that you get your podcast. Also, follow us on Twitter and Instagram at this underscore is underscore dynasty for extra content and to join in on the conversation. 